Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. On August 17th, the Sussexes joined Queen's Commonwealth Trust leaders for a discussion about social media, the role of the online world as a force for good, and the profound difference online communities can make to lives over generations in the future. The discussion was chaired by Chief Executive of Queen's Commonwealth Trust, Nicola Brednall. In this film, the participants take a closer look at the power and potential of digital communities, collaboration, and positive behaviors. The Duke of Sussex commented during the discussion, No one could have predicted just how the world was going to change in such a short space of time, especially with the digital space. But hearing you guys, and knowing the broad spectrum that the Queen's Commonwealth Trust engulfs, you are the definition of the 21st century Commonwealth and what it means to be part of it. What are the techniques? How can you acknowledge or shut down hate in an instant without sharing it or without fueling it? The moment we're scrolling down our phone and we see something horrendous about someone else or a group of people, we have a moment in, in, that, in that time, a tiny moment, to keep scrolling or to do something about it. We had a stage when young people are now using radio and social media to communicate clearly and ethically about issues that matter the most to them. The space online and everyone's mental and emotional well-being are perhaps more fragile than ever before, certainly with COVID. In the absence of human interaction, people are going online more than ever before to feel community. I created my community online because I just wanted young people from disadvantaged backgrounds to know that you're seen, you're heard, you're valued, you're talented, you're amazing and wherever your dream goal or dream university is, you can go there and do well and not have to alter yourself. Boys and young men want that space to be real. But as we all know from our respective life experiences, vulnerability is scary. It is. It's edgy, it's raw, it's uncomfortable, but on the other side, and I'll quote Brene Brown here, is that vulnerability brings connection, and connection is why we are here. We are all able to show our vulnerability. That doesn't mean that you're weak. If anything, I believe that's probably shown most of your strength. Really what we're seeing is the power of social media. You know, we're tackling some of the biggest issues so much quicker and with an accelerated pace online. With social media and the way that it can help so many individuals and groups, be able to, to improve, be able to connect, and be able to focus on the things that really matter and the things that bind us rather than the things that divide us. I think that's what's so key too is as we talk about positivity and optimism and what a healthy online community looks like. It's not an echo chamber. It's trying to build a healthy community so that people feel safe, heard, and perhaps walk away with a different perspective. And I think it's beautiful to be able to contribute to such a positive space and I think everyone has the power to do that you know you can use your platform no matter how big or small to make a positive impact. Go that extra mile and understand the source of the information that you have asked to share because I've come to learn you can never change the world just by using single tweets as a source of information. You guys are the definition of the 21st century commonwealth and what it means to be part of it you know you are there standing for equality for mutual respect and for fairness, I think the one sort of combining piece here is courage. It takes a huge amount of courage for, for you guys to set up a community like you have, but then also for other people to, to stand up to hate. Thank you for all the work you're doing and, and as much as we can do to support you through Queen's Commonwealth Trust, uh, please know that we are here to lend our support. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Another analysis, biggest threat to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's new mansion has nothing to do with intrusive paparazzi. Meghan, Duchess of Sussex and Prince Harry officially stepped down from royal duties in March and moved to California. They lived at actor and producer Tyler Perry's Beverly Hills mansion for some time before buying their own home in Santa Barbara. But their new property could pose a threat the couple likely never considered. The Sussexes felt they were under siege when they were in Los Angeles. When Meghan and Harry were staying at Perry's home, they didn't get the privacy they had hoped for. The Beverly Ridge estate sits atop a hill, so when the trails and parks nearby reopened after lockdown restrictions in the state were relaxed, hikers and locals walking their dogs up the hilltop could see into the property. 
The Prince and former Suits star also spotted drones flying above the mansion, some coming within 20 feet of the house, a number of times. The pair also experienced aggressive tactics by photographers whenever they left the home and were chased on a highway. But the biggest threat at their new house isn't the intrusive paparazzi. Inside Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's Santa Barbara mansion, the Sussexes purchased the Chateau of Riggan Rock Mansion from Russian businessman Sergei Grishin for $14.7 million. The home is 19,000 square feet with nine bedrooms and 16 bathrooms. It also has a guest house, a tea house, a children's playset, a tennis court, and a swimming pool. May spokesperson for the Duke and Duchess said, they have settled into the quiet privacy of their community since their arrival and hope that this will be respected for their neighbors, as well as for them as a family. Threat at their new home. The Santa Barbara property may offer more privacy than the Beverly Hills estate, but some residents in the region want to warn the couple of other threats such as earthquakes and wildfires. The Sussexes mansion is located in the heart of California's earthquake country. While the city of Santa Barbara hasn't had a major quake in decades, experts believe the area is due for one as it's near the San Luis Fault Range and the Hosfrey Fault, which are components of the San Andreas Fault system. The wildfires are another big threat, as Colo bottling heir Alki David explained. The notorious billionaire, who lives just over an hour from Meghan and Harry in Malibu, believes the infernos pose a constant threat to residents. David said, I love Harry and Meghan, and it is only fair they should know about the risks in Montecito. It is hard for someone from England to understand the sheer terror of fires that size. I fear the royals are sleepwalking into a fire trap. In 2019, the wildfires forced more than 6,000 Santa Barbara residents to flee their homes. Another report. How a shopping trip changed Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton's relationship. Ever since Meghan Markle and Prince Harry stepped down from their royal duties and moved to the United States, rumors about their strained relationships and dramatic encounters with the British royal family have spread like wildfire. However, one of those rumors is hardly new and has been consistent since long before the couple decided to take a break from their royal status. That Meghan and Kate Middleton don't have the best of relationships. A book published in August 2020, Finding Freedom by Royal Reporters, Omid Scobby and Carolyn Durand, recounts how the rift between the two duchesses began. Most previous claims about the unproven feud between the two women have revolved around Meghan, allegedly making Kate cry during bridesmaid Princess Charlotte's dress fitting, Meghan's decision to relocate with her husband away from Kate and Prince William, and Meghan's alleged mistreatment of her staff. However, the new text gives insight into what really triggered the rift between the two duchesses. Kate gave Meghan the cold shoulder. According to Finding Freedom, while Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton were not at war with each other, they struggled to move past distant politeness. According to the unofficial biography, the distance between the two duchesses began when Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were still only dating in 2017. One of the most awkward incidents took place when Meghan crossed paths with Kate in Kensington Palace, and the two found themselves about to go shopping on the same street. But Kate drove in the opposite direction in her own Range Rover, leaving Meghan to shop by herself. Kate didn't make much of an effort to bridge the divide, authors Omid Stabi and Carolyn Duran said. In fact, when they first met, Meghan tried to break the ice by gifting Kate a Smithson notebook and cooing over Princess Charlotte, who was just 20 months old at the time. But as the book explains, Kate and the Suits actress had nothing in common aside from living in the same palace. Meghan reportedly expected quite a different reception from Kate, 
assuming that the Duchess of Cambridge would offer the lowdown on how to navigate the royal ropes and welcome her into the family. The authors wrote, But that was not how things turned out. Meghan was disappointed that she and Kate hadn't bonded over the position they shared, but she wasn't losing sleep over it. The Duchesses aren't the only two members of the royal family who deal with never ending feud rumors. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more LMT videos about your favorite stuff. For coming soon, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Don't stop.